All right, welcome everyone to the, uh, what we'll call the Zoom meeting, all things Golden Letter. So before we get going, just a, just a couple of thoughts. First off, you know, I want to thank Gene for doing this. You know, as you all know, um, Gene is one of our great executive clients in Coach Zuber's schedule. I've got the privilege of sitting in for Craig as he's out having fun today and, and this week. So Gene, mm -hmm. thank you for, for being generous with your time. My and my promise to everybody is it's gonna be an amazing hour. Right. I've already got a ton of questions ahead of time that you guys have around all things Golden Letter. I promise you, we will start out broad. We'll get into the nitty gritty on it. I guarantee it. And just do me one favor, though, because I know you guys are going to be asking a ton of questions also in the chat box. As you know, anytime we're on big Zoom meetings, sometimes what happens is the chat box becomes its own seminar. Right. You know what I'm talking about. And then some of the questions get lost. So just do me a favor in the chat box when you guys have questions, let's just make sure it's used for questions. Um, not too much you know, commentary going on on that side. Otherwise we might miss some of the questions. Fair? Cool. So Gene, yes. tell people who you are and where you hail from. For those, yes. that, yeah, for those that only know you as the guy from Bold, you're more yes. than that. I wore my purple shirt just for that today. Um, yeah, so I've been with K KW 20 years and started in, in 1994. Uh, currently, I have a team of my wife runs the operations. I run the sales side of um, two virtuals, um, three ISAs, three listing agents, uh, three buyers agents, and then three more admin. And last year, we did 132 million, um, 3.7 million in GCI. 235 transactions, Austin, Texas. Um, and like everybody, we're in a crazy seller's market. So that's the golden letter was very important to us. Yeah. And, and first off, um, just, you know, again, thank you for doing this and thank you for your commitment to, to your commitment to mastery as well. Not just everything you did for bold in that program, but for just being willing to come on here and share, right. And, and talk about what you've done. Just know that we appreciate that. No. Thank so you. you're already running a successful business. Why the golden letter? Um, we were running into a situation where, you know, as the market started shifting into a really extreme seller's market uh, and going through COVID, it's just, we weren't getting the come list meets like we normally do. We do have a, a farm of about 4,500 homes that we've been farming to for about 15 years. It has about 300, well, 300 sales a year, 600 sides a year. Um, we usually get 50, 60, 70 sides out of that a year, uh, which we were, you know, we were still getting or are getting, um, but just with COVID, people aren't moving as much. And so, um, you know, as Gary's been saying, we, we, people are staying in their homes longer, longer, longer. These crazy low interest rates are keeping people from either refinancing and they're like, mm, you know, you know, I can live in this house for, um, you know, why do I want to move? So we just got, you know, talked about different ways of, you know, how can we communicate um, you know, a make me move type deal to get people to raise their hand and say, you know, we'd consider selling. Awesome. And so when did you start it? July of 2020. Awesome. So you started it July, 2020, right? Yep. And so result wise, I know we're going to look at your spreadsheet here in a minute and we'll get to all of that. But, and before we do, what is the golden letter? Cause I know some people still are unclear on exactly what it is. Right. It's a very simple letter. Um, that says, would you consider selling your house at 123 Main Street to a client of mine? That's it. Signed by me. Uh, it's, there's no letterhead on it other than, you know, my Keller Williams. And then on the bottom, it, you know, it's got the disclosure. If you're currently listed, you know, please disregard that kind of thing. All right. Would you be able to share it? Sure. Can you, can you bring it up on the screen real quick? Yeah, I can do that. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see, gotta find it, there it is. Is that pretty crazy? Is that amazing, people? <laughs> All right, so that's it. That's the magic right there. So let, let's break this down because, you know, well, hold on a minute, put it back up. <laughs> I know it's simple, but trust me, it takes us a minute, right? I'm just kidding. Because yeah. clearly it can't be that simple. All right, because here's what happens. So as a coach, I share that message with clients. And then what they do, Gene, is that they send it back to me all gussied up, right? With all this other stuff in it. What is it about this simplistic message that works? Well, it's not even just that. I wish I had a picture of the envelope. 
right? Because the envelope is a plain white envelope with a stamp, not a meter, mm -hmm. and it's handwritten with their name and address. And I think the effectiveness of this is just you cannot open something that's hand addressed to you. You just don't get very many of them. No, hold on. Let's be clear. It's not handwriting font, right? No, it's no, it is not. Addressed. It is hand addressed. I have a, a single mom who's going through a police academy and her, her mother who lives with her uh, for $11 an hour, they just handwrite these letters. All right, so they hand, handwrite these addresses. Sure. Yeah, they handwrite the addresses and then sign my name on the letter right. itself. So they, so you've got someone who's, who's doing it, uh, the address, right? They're yep. signing it for you. Are you putting a return address on the envelope? I'm not, no. Okay. It's still, right. you know, it keeps it a mystery, right? Who sent me this handwritten note? Yeah, so for everyone listening, let's be clear. You don't change the message, do you either? From, from you know, letter to letter, it stays the same, right? Yeah. The envelope. By the way, I'm looking out my window right now, and you no know, real estate is really good when there is a Range Rover, very nice Range Rover sitting here with a custom license plate that says Stager on it. <laughs> if your Stager is driving a bad, a really cool Range Rover, life is good in real estate. <laughs> Is that the truth? Yeah. All right, all right. So bring that down from the screen real quick, so I can got it. See you guys. So just to be clear, no letterhead, simple message, hand addressed envelope, a real stamp. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yep. You know, we don't have to add any any you know talk about the market being great. We don't have to brag about any sales that we had in the neighborhood recently. We don't have to talk about how much equity they have and why it's a good time to sell. We don't do any of that. Nope. Dear homeowner, would you be interested in selling your home at 123 Main Street to a client of mine? If so, call me, phone number. That's it. That's it. Simple. All right. I think we're done. No, I'm just yep. kidding. Yep. And I've, I've run the exact same thing where I tell people about it and they try to over, over, over complicate it. It's just not complicated. And, and just to be clear, you don't have any other versions of the letter. That's it. Just that one letter. That's it. No okay. other versions. All right. I think we've, I think we're all clear on that. All right. Now you pay someone to, to hand address them for you. Have you ever used any of the hand addressing services? No. Okay. So for those of you guys that are listening that are interested in the services, there's, there's two, right? One is called theaddressers.com, right? Theaddressers.com. The other one that also does a good job is called ballpoint marketing. So if you're, if you want to outsource it, there you go. What's the cost, Aaron? The cost. All right. So glad you asked. If you're sending out 500 of them, it's $1.43. If you're sending out 1,000 of them at a time, it's $1.06. It then you know, continues to scale down to 68 cents if you hit, I think, 2,000 or 2,500. Hmm. And those are, you send them your, your CSV file, you send them your Word doc, right? They mail merge it, they stuff it, they have the machines that have the handwriting, you know, that handwrite it, and then they put a real stamp and out it goes. So I'm curious, Again, I have no idea if this is true. Um, if it were to show up and that was done in Chicago and it was mailed to Austin, Texas. So, yeah. So the addressers mails, they're out of Santa Ana. So they mail it out of, you know, Santa Ana. Yeah, because that's a that's a concern. Ballpoint marketing will actually send them to you and then you drop them in your own post office box. Okay. Hmm. okay. So, I'm, average, I mean, I'm about 89 cents. So it, it sounds like there's a cheaper way to do it here. Yeah, there might be. So, yeah. all right, but let's get a little bit more into the nitty gritty. So that's the letter. Let's just be clear. We don't change it. We don't add to it. We don't have multiple versions of it. It's pretty straightforward. So then how many letters are you sending per month? And then what's the return that you're getting on? So right now we're sending 300 on Monday, 300 on Wednesday, and 300 on Friday. So you have it broken down where you're sending it out three times a week, every week? Yes. And that's... Okay. I mean, I initially did like 600 uh, and I got all these calls. This is my farm. I got all these calls all at once. And I'm like, stop. I'm like, I don't even know what to do. I had no systems, no models, anything. And so I couldn't even handle the calls. Um, and so, you know, right now with our three ISAs, um, with their other work they're doing, 900 a week is really churning, you know, quite a bit, you know, keeping a good conversations and setting appointments. All right, and so what you learned when you first did it is you just did a big drop and then it was overwhelming, right? Overwhelming, 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then and then what you did is you started building systems behind that, which we'll get to in a minute, to now make it such that it's running almost as a its own standalone business, correct? Correct. All right. Yes. And, and, and that's a point that I want you guys all to hear is that this is not something that we do willy-nilly. It's systematized and you're running it almost as its own business and you treat it as such, correct, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you've got a budget for it. You've got the systems, right? You know what your return is on it. You know what you can expect from it, right? And then of course you're staffing it accordingly. Absolutely. Awesome. So you shared with me earlier what that tracking spreadsheet looks like. Would you be willing to bring that up again? Sure. Actually, I got a correction. My office just sent me this. We're now sending 1,800 a week, uh, letters a week. There you have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll be and, yeah. And then thank you, Rebecca, for the question. So the letters that you're dropping, are they on the same neighborhood month after month? Or how often do you space it out to the different areas? So it's zip codes. So I think that's important to talk about before we get any farther is who you're going to send them to, right? The first thing that I did was um, I had my title company pool the turnover rates for the Austin area. And so what I, what I wanted to know was what was the turnover rate and what was the average sales price in that? Because I didn't want a, a great turnover rate, which by the way, we're looking for anything above 6% turnover rate. So if there's <laughs> yeah. 5,000 homes in the neighborhood, we wanna know that, what was that 50 times six? there's at least 300 sales a year, right? And why is that 6% important? That's just a number that we know that if we mail it to that, then it'll, it will, there's enough turnover that we'll get enough response that it, we should convert yeah. and be very profitable. Yeah. Do you ever cheat because it's a neighborhood you want to be in? No, not yet. All right. No. So 6% um, turnover is the minimum. And then are you calculating that yourself? Or are you going to your title company to say, hey, what, you know, where's the turnover? Yeah, we have the title company run it and okay. they pull a list and then they also tell me the average sales price in that neighborhood. So I don't want 11% turnover rate in a $200,000 neighborhood, right? So most of our neighborhoods are over 500,000 um, that we're moving to um, because our average commission right now from the golden letter is 18,500. Okay. So um, it's just, you know, it's it was amazing that we were getting all these really high end calls 2 million 3 million in, in Austin that's 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 a high end home i mean that's yeah. any million is considered luxury here yeah um so um I, multiple you know multiple multi million dollar homes that have that uh, we've talked to either listed or in conversations with yeah. so so uh, all right so you're doing it by zip code right and then did you start doing it by zip code or did you start with smaller neighborhoods or subdivisions that you saw the turnover in and then you started just expanding it out to the zip code so the first thing I did was I did my farm, right? I've been farming the farm for 15 years. Um, our building, we have a, we do have a um, our own standalone building inside the farm, uh, which used to be the welcome center for the neighborhood. And so um, when the developer didn't need it anymore, we purchased it and moved our team in it. And so we're right here as everybody drives by us. So we're pretty well branded. You know, we've been farming and doing everything in the schools and all that fun stuff for a long time. And so I want to experiment with that. And so I took those phone calls. So those phone calls actually came to my cell phone initially. And so that's when my phone just started blowing up. And I was like, oh, I couldn't even answer the phone because I realized I was answering the phone blind. And, and one other thing I, I do want to tell you guys, I think it's very important for me and most, you know, I'm sure you guys too, goes, Hey, I don't want to send a letter and I don't have a buyer. So everywhere we send a, a, a letter to, we have a certified buyer and that's part of the script that, you know, when we do talk to somebody that we do have this family or this family or this family looking and that we mail, you know, to your whole area. We didn't just mail to your, to you. We did, cause I'll say, oh, is this just to me or is this to everybody? I'm like, well, not to everybody, but we did mail to your neighborhood. Yeah, and we'll, we'll go there in a minute, but let's go back to the zip codes, right? So you're doing it by zip code. And then what's the frequency that you're dropping it on each zip code? I've not gotten back yet. You know, we started in July. I've not hit my farm again yet. Okay. So we, we've been moving around the city. Got and it. It, it, quite frankly, Part of it was my buyer's agents are like, I need houses over here. And we're like, okay, that's a good, that's got a turn, good turnover rate, a good price point. Let's do it. And so we've been, we've been hitting those because the validity behind it is going, we have this family, they're leasing in the neighborhood. They'd really like to buy. There's zero houses. Would you consider selling? And so that's an easy conversation. And, you know, whether it's a match or not, 
we got got them on the phone. We have their phone number, their address, their email, and we can stay in contact with them. Yeah. So, so you've been going for eight months, and you you haven't repeated a zip code or area yet. No. Yeah. What do you think? You know, moving forward, though, what do you think that'll look like as far as frequency? Will it be once a year? I mean, or what do you think you could? Yeah, get away I would with. Think, you know, roughly once a year. You know, right now, I think I can easily go back to my farm again, just because it's spring and. Right. In the in the market is even more desperate than it was when I mailed it the first time. Yeah. Um, so the message is even you know more intense. Yeah. Uh, and the prices have gone up. Literally, we've had you know our prices have gone up twenty to thirty percent in six eight months. Yeah, I would say you know my opinion is at best you could probably hit one area every six months because mm -hmm. I think if you do it any more frequent than that, the the letter becomes inauthentic. Yes. Right. Because part of the the reason why it works is because it seems it is authentic. It's addressed to them by hand. They open it up. The message is so simple. It's to them. It's not a bragging. It's authentic, right? And if they see that happening more than twice a year, or or you know even more than once a year, I, I mean I don't think it'll it'll have the same effectiveness. You know, really cool side note is is that I got a call. You know, so you do get calls from agents, and they're like, "Hey, my client got this letter. Do you have a buyer?" And I'm like, "Sure." You know, tell me about the tell me about the house. I'd love to know about a house that's not on the market. Um, to share with our buyers, which obviously is a value proposition for our buyers and our buyers agents. They know that we're doing these mailings. They know we're farming, trying to find sellers that are off market for them. Um, so it's a, it's a value proposition for that side of the business. Uh, but I had an agent call me and I told him, he said, oh, tell me about the house. And he told me, and he's like, oh, it needs to be fixed up. It's all original. Boom, 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 boom. She's already bought another house. She's moving out this weekend. I said, what are you thinking? He said, I don't know. We're thinking 350. And I was like, Ooh, oh, that's a good price. And, but I know it was old and long story short, I bought the house for three and he said, ah, she really wants to just go on the market. And I said, I'm going to send you an offer. I sent over an offer full price minus my commission, got the house. Um, we put a hundred thousand in it. So we had 450 in it. We, we sold it for 600,000. There you go. And that was that, I mean, that's, that's a, that's an asterisk to, right. um, you know, to the golden letter. Right. So, 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 all right, let's get back to the system. So we're all clear what the letter looks like. Right. You've now been very clear as far as who we're sending it to. We're sending it to zip codes or neighborhoods that have a minimum of a 6% turnover. Right. Yeah. The frequency, I mean, you haven't even got to a year yet, but your frequency is probably going to be at least 12 months. You've got, you've got enough zip codes and areas that you can keep going. Oh, yeah. worst, worst case, if you're in a smaller market, you could probably hit it every six months. Yeah. Right. And so now let's, let's, let's go to the next step in the system on what happens when those calls do come in. Because I know a lot of people have questions on the script, on what we say, on you know all the objections that you've gotten. So I'm going to go to what what I do today um, versus what I learned. Um, and so what I do today, and this is a, because of what we learned, is that when that phone number calls, it goes to a voicemail, and the voicemail says, "Hey, this is Gene. I'm sorry, I missed your call. Uh, if you're calling about the letter I sent you, please leave your name and number and your address, and I will call you right back." Or I say, actually, I say, we will call you right back. Right. That then gets transcribed to an email to my ISA in the Philippines. She then researches the property, pulls it all up, pulls it all up and puts it in a nice little package, sends it to my ISA in my office here. And then the ISA calls and says, Aaron, got your call. One, two, three, Main Street. Boom, boom, boom. So would you consider selling your house? And so he goes into the whole script. Oh, you know, do you have a buyer just for my house? And and I can bring him in here in a minute and he can give you the script um, live if you like. I'm, I'm sure everyone would want that. Yeah. So, so basically, whoever, whenever they call, we know what neighborhood they're calling from from the phone number. So each each zip code gets its own phone number. And okay. that costs $2 for each phone call, each zip or each phone number. Okay. Um, and so, and- Are you running that through, through Google Voice or- no, I got a, I got a service. System. Okay. Yeah, I got a service that, that yeah. does. It. Um, and so that that's that's it. I mean, we it allows me to have the information on the front end. So when I do call and we do touch base with them, that at that point, I know who they are. I know what they bought it for. I know where they live. I know what's the comps in the neighborhood. I know exactly which section of that neighborhood they're in. And so the validity that we can when we get on the phone with them is very strong. And I probably can already go ahead and bring up one or two buyers that we know already matches their home if they just want to sell it off market right now. Got it. Got it. So instead of getting caught off guard by the call, you're very clear that they leave a message. It goes to your ISA, right? Who then 
you know, transcribes it, or it goes to your VA who transcribes it, goes to the ISA, right? And then I, ISA is making the call back or you're making the call yeah. with all the information in front of you. And then if they don't leave a message, like we have plenty of calls and they don't leave a message, that's checked twice a day by the, by the VA and they send it to, the, they research it, they Google the phone number yeah. and they've got different services where they try to figure out who that is that called yeah. and they do the same thing. And then they send it to the ISA and the ISA calls and says, oh, hey, I saw you called, miss call, da, 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 Aaron, did you have some questions? Yeah. You know. They know how to lead right into it and, you know, anyway. All right, got it. All right, so if you'd be willing to bring the ISA in, I know a lot of people want to know what that script does look like. Yep, I can do that. Um, ask me another question while I get in. Yeah, so I guess, you know, you, you obviously created that system because you learned something by doing it the other way, which was taking calls on the fly, right? Yep. Yeah, what, what did you learn the negative was to that? I just wasn't prepared. I had no idea who they were. I had no idea which was the property. I didn't know if it was a one story or two story. I didn't know if it was in what section. I didn't know um, approximate price point for that for that property. Um, so it just, you know, it's, it's all the things that when you make a, um, somebody inquires about selling their home that you, all the data that you collect before you call that seller, yeah. um, make you the expert. So I just didn't have that data. So it just allowed yeah. me to be more prepared. Yeah, and so do you find when you are prepared and you're making a proactive call on offense versus being on defense that a lot of those objections around, hey, do you really have a buyer? Is this a, you know, just a phishing scheme, right? You know, some of those things that people sometimes say when, oh, yeah. when they catch you off guard, do you find a lot of that just goes away? Oh yeah, because you do, right? I mean, at that point, we can already say that we have Sarah and John that live two, two blocks over and we have their house under contract and they don't know where they're moving to. Yeah. Would you consider selling your house to them? Got it. Got it. All right. And so, and I want to do the ISA and then I'm, we're going to bring up your tracking spreadsheet because I know a lot of people want to see what that looks like as well. Yeah, I texted him. So he must be on the phone. All right. Well, we'll give it a minute. Yeah. And so then anything else that we should know just on. Oh, perfect. Ryan. Gentlemen, gentlemen. All right. Squeeze and ladies. In, squeeze in here. Yes, sir. Sure. He's larger than me. <laughs> all right this is ryan so we were just talking about when you take the transfer call you get the email um saying here's a golden letter here's what they said here's the information about their home and you're calling aaron back right now to talk about one two three main street all right just switch it yep all right yeah hi aaron ryan white with the gene Arant team hey thanks for calling back i understand you got gene's letter right yeah i got the letter in the mail Awesome. Thanks. You got your voicemail. Aaron, obviously, I mean, you're probably aware the market is moving so fast. There's just no inventory. We have upwards of 43 buyers working with our buyer agents. Four specific families are interested in your neighborhood, in a home exactly like yours. And I mean, we're real curious if y'all considered selling and if you did sell right now at the height of the market, where would you plan on moving to? Yeah. So, all right, let's pause right there. You guys get that? Simple script. I don't think there's anything hard or offending about that script at all, right? Nope. And so what you're doing is you're acknowledging, yeah, you're acknowledging why the letter, why they received the letter, right? You're already answering the question that you got buyers looking in their neighborhood for homes like theirs. And then I think the most important thing that you did, right, at the end of that was you took control by asking that question, right, where am I moving to? Or where am I looking to move to, correct? Correct, Aaron. Thanks. Yeah. Trying to get the motivation in that initial quick statement. And also I've gotten pushed back a couple of times from people saying, well, you really have buyers interested in my house. So I try to cut that off at the pass. Right. And so what are the biggest objections you get when you, when you ask that question, where are you moving to next? Like what are, what would you say the, the most common responses to that? I most common, know. Yeah. I haven't thought about it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I, I don't know. Just got the letter. I haven't thought about it. Well, if you were to move, if you, I mean, I know you don't know where you'd go, but if you did know, where do you think that'd be? Um, we'd probably downsize. Why is that important to you? Um, we got a ton of equity. We can, you know, kids are going to be going off to college in a couple of years. So we could bank the equity and just get out of it. Well, that's really smart. I would, I agree. You know, Gene just did the same thing. He just sold his house and pulled his equity out. Smart. Yeah. I dropped that exact script. 
Hey, Gene and Susan Islanders just did the same thing Aaron Steiner and got a lakeside place close by. That's the exact reason Don't we should meet. I live on the lake. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible place. No view. All right. So, so you know, now that I've told you where I'm going, right? Now, now, how are we closing it to the appointment, or what does that look like? Well, or are you going to ask more questions before you close it to the appointment? You know, um, ideally, I want to dig as deep as I can in motivation there, and probably one or two more questions if they're having a conversation with me about it. And I really want to find out what's most important, what their next place looks like, and have them dreaming about it, if ideally. But the next question would be, oh, Aaron, thanks for sharing with me. Um, I mean, you probably aren't surprised how many people are looking at capitalizing this market and downsizing, or even capitalizing and upsizing. Um, it's the exact reason I'd uh, love to have Stephanie stop by. She's our market specialist. She's amazing. She can do our due diligence for our buyer families and keep our word to them, get our eyes on your property, communicate adequately to our agents and our clients, and you know, find out what they're willing to pay. Is that fair enough? Well, let me ask you this question, Brian. Do you actually have a buyer for my house? Yeah, Aaron, we have multiple buyers. Absolutely. Right now, I mentioned four specific families looking for a home just like yours. I'm not going to tell you they drove by and said, yes, I want to buy your house. But your house aligns ideally with all of their needs. They're highly motivated, pre-qualified, and there's no inventory for them to buy. Right. So if Stephanie can you know, do a quick preview, it'd be very helpful for our buyers. But more importantly, she can provide real-time market information that the algorithms can't even keep up with and show you financially you know, what your gains are and what it looks like for your family to make the right decision, even if it's not now. Does that sound good? I love what you said. Real time, you know, market data that the logarithms can't even keep up with. Nice. All right. So here, how about this one, Brian? Well, you know, if you have a buyer, you can bring the buyer by, but we're not interested in listing the home. Okay. We'd be interested in letting your buyer look at it, but we're really not interested in listing the home. Thank you. I respect that. I mean, there's so many options in our market and you've got all the leverage you know with your beautiful property there so yeah stephanie will show you all the options happy to answer any questions they're important to your family just so you can make the right financial decision if it's not worth capitalizing right now and cashing out and you know realizing your goals then you know you'll still be gaining equity and you'll know exactly where your family stands don't you want that information all right good what other objections so i mean those are the top two that i see which is do you really have a buyer and then of course, I don't want to list it, but you can come and show it to my buyer. Yeah, we've got a lot of, I mean, I was going to say, we've got a lot of pocket listings too. So we have a ton of pocket that are making me move and saying, here, bring me a buyer for this. And we've lined up dominoes with that where they're like, we're not going to market. We're not going to sign anything. You bring me an offer for this, we're out of here. And we've had, and we've done that. So it's, you know, those opportunities are, are awesome. But basically he's just trying to, you know, and we do, a, I would say 50% of the appointments are over the phone because they're like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not willing to have somebody come through my house for now with COVID or this or that. I said, but I, yes, I would be absolutely happy to talk to them. And so it starts with the conversation over the phone and then you start nurturing from there. Okay. If, got it. Um, and if I'm ever questioning their motivation or they're really not serious about selling, then again, I will connect them with our, you know, market specialist. I don't ever tell them it's She's a listing agent. And we sure. changed her, we changed her business card from listing specialist or seller specialist to market specialist because we had one person go and he included her on an email and it on her on her email signature it said listing agent. And like whoa, what am I doing? What's this listing agent? You know what? what you know so we're like uh uh. And, and truly today because the market is so freaking volatile, yeah, it, it is a market specialist. Absolutely, it, you know, and it's not. It's not about listing it. It's not a seller. It's what do you know about the market and how best can you help them? Period. Right. Right. So, so in, you know, it takes away again, some of that objection around, I don't want to list it. Right. And it takes some of that out of it and it keeps them in relationship longer. It sounds like. Thank yep. you. So, all right. Chat box. Anybody have any other objections that you're curious about while we've got Brian here in front of us? It's Ryan, by the way. Oh, Ryan, I'm sorry. Hey, no worries, man. Happens okay. all the time. I get called Gene too. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think another common th objection that I do here, Aaron, real quick to interject is, well, we plan on keeping this, you know, we're in the great school district. We've got kids. We've been here less than two years. Um, you know, I don't, 
I mean, I, but for the right price, everybody, you know, would sell, right? Yep. And yep. I see some, I see some people asking about leaving money on the table and that's really the biggest thing, right? The reality is, look, we can absolutely show it to our four buyers. Um, but what's most important to you getting the most money on your house or selling it to one of our four buyers, right? Now, and, now is Ryan having that conversation or do you just defer that to the marketing specialist listing agent, right? To, to have that conversation. Both. both, yeah. both. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Hold on. I'm just, I'm just reading through these real quick. Cause I know Gene, you probably are also Ryan, any of these that you're seeing that you want to address? Obviously, leaving my table. I think finding the house, I'm open to listing, but I haven't found a house yet. You know, our biggest, you know, I, th I think one of the objection handlers for that is the simple fact that we've, we have recently sold multiple houses and gotten year lease back, a year lease back. People are coming and buying a house a year ahead of time. They're willing to not move into the house for a year if they can find the right house. We can find you a house. And, and our, our, I think our most famous scripting is we've never had anybody go homeless. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, love, I love that line. 26 plus years, we've never left anybody homeless. You normally get a giggle out of them and they open up a little more. So, so, all right. So fast forward a little bit. We're going to, you know, we'll get to the listing piece here in a minute. Um, before we do, we're going to go into conversion and all of that in just a second. But a couple of you have asked around, you know, best case scenario, they call you back. You do have a buyer, right? You're now potentially representing them, representing the buyer. There's a couple of questions on there around, do you run it as dual agency, right? And, you know, how do you have, handle the conversation around they could get more money if they put it on the market? Well, I mean, that, that's, it's, it's like any, it's like an, any iBuyer, right? An iBuyer today is, hey, I'll buy your house right now, right? Don't put it on the market, I'll buy your house you know, for cash. However, it's a lead generation tool. If this is something that can happen, you have no household cash, boom, close quick. If you want to maximize, here's our plan to maximize. We absolutely would will work with you to maximize the exposure of your home and get you 25 offers on your home, right? Um, so that's number one. What was the other objection? So bottom line is you're giving them the options, right? Yeah, you're absolutely. Saying, hey, here's the pros of, of taking a buyer that we have, making it easy, making it clean, right? Here's the advantages of what it could like to put it on the market and what goes along with that. You're the client, you choose. Yeah, most of the time, and I see representation question, most of the time we're able to list and bring in a buyer's agent and work with, in Texas called intermediary. So we don't, dual agency is not allowed in Texas. So we, uh, we have to have representation. So it may be two people on our same team, but it's anybody in my Keller Williams office that, you know, if we have the same broker, it's called intermediary here. Uh, so we're always going to have a buyer represented and a seller represented. Now, may you have a seller say, bring me a buyer, I'll pay you 3%, whatever. Uh, that happens, and and then that's a disclosure that they're representing themselves. You know, we, we don't represent them in that. All right. That's... And then I know there's a couple other commission questions which we'll get to. But before we do, I want to run through what this has looked like for the last eight months for you from a conversion standpoint, because you've been tracking this at a high level, correct? Pretty high. We've had to, you know, it's it's been evolving, but I think it's I think it's above average. Let me put it that way. All right. Well, let's let's take a look at it. Got it. All right, right, right. I think you're good, bro. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. The challenge we're having, my pleasure. It's obviously not as big a conversion percentage as yeah. a traditional listing or an expired conversion. Yeah, I told them it's about 2%. But it's so worth it. So here's good. our numbers. Yeah, you're good. Right. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Hey, Sam, Thank good to you. see you. Uh, so on here, you can see the months we started, the, the zip codes we did, our neighborhoods, and then the total callbacks of 365. Of the 365, 214 of those people are now in our database. Well, and just to be clear, right? Because you have the zip code, but how many letters was that each month that you dropped? Because I know you're up to 1,800 a week now, yeah, right? I can't quite see the screen the way you guys see it. Um, I think what you told me was you're doing, I think, 17,000. Yeah, so it's it's over here on the right. 17,339, as you can see the total. And then you can see the different mail outs of the different zip codes. Okay, so that's the total. So, okay. Right. And then so so, you're doing on average close to around 5,000 mailers a month. Correct. Okay. Perfect. And then, you know, we've closed 37,000, we have a hundred thousand pending and we have 369,000 that's signed up for either coming soon or listed. Got it. Um, All right. And, and so, we've closed two of those are buyers. <laughs> so it's mostly sellers. Those are called future sellers, Gene. They're future yes. sellers. All right. Yeah. 
And I calculated the 214 people we put in our database, it, it equals to $172 million in volume is, wow. is the value of their, yeah. So, and then we have each, uh, now I've got to change this. I'm sorry, I got to drag you guys around. So if I pick a zip code down here, uh, you know, I can pick it and then, oh shoot, that's not a good one. Well, while you're hunting around there, the bottom line to that spreadsheet is that you're getting about a 2% response. Right, that, that's what it breaks down to, right? Yep. All right. Yep. Yeah, I was just going to see if I actually had a. Uh, what was that book there? I, I usually, I mean, I've got all of the properties listed somewhere. I just don't know where they are. Well, here, let's, get, that main, let's keep digesting that main spreadsheet. Okay. I'll go back. Let me say that. I don't know where it is. It was all the way to the right. That's not it. Well, uh, now we can really get into my stuff. I'm just going to open it again. Trusting. I don't know where it is. I may have done something. By the way, I don't, I don't do anything in here. This is this is all done by somebody else, unfortunately. All right. Well, we got a local uh, tech wizard, Jeremy Herman, said, "Click on the four lines." Oh, there it is. There it is. All right. There we go. Cool. Thank you, Jeremy. All right. Cool. So total callbacks, right, of seventeen thousand letters mailed was 365, which was roughly 2%, right? Your potential GCI on all of that, you know, 8.9 million roughly. You've got yep. another, what's your difference between your potential and your nurtures? Potential, what you have, you know, under contract? This what, yeah, this is what came in, um, but then this is what we kept. So these are the people that we're still talking to. Got it. You know, That's there's, it. you know, some of them were agents, some of them were people we don't want to work with, whatever. Um, you know, felt like that we were not going to put them in our database. Okay, cool. So not everybody goes in the database. If you yeah. have a conversation and they're, you know, not worth it, you don't even bother nurturing them. No, I mean, we don't put jerks in our, in our database. Got and it. there's going to be people that just, you don't like. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Why put them in there? Yeah. So then your signed potential GCI, right, is 368. Correct. Your current pending is 100,000. Correct. Right? Yep. And then what you've already closed, of course, 37,000. Correct. Right. So really what you're at in eight months is about 500,000 in GCI. Correct. Is that right? Off an investment. So those 17,000 letters you said were costing you 89 cents? Uh, no, 370 is the total. That's including the pending and the sold. So 370. Oh, okay. So that is pending and sold. Yep. Okay. So still 370 off, what is that? Almost a... Fourteen, fifteen thousand dollar investment. Yep, fifteen thousand four hundred twenty-seven dollars. There you go. Yep. Any questions about that? That's it. And so, who's keeping track for you? Is it the your VA who's taking down the information? Because I know you've got some more detailed tracking down there, right? One person in house, Joanne. So she's her job is to make sure that I'm picking the zip codes and that, that I've got a good flow going. And then she coordinates with uh, Maria who does the letters. Um, and then she orders the stamps, those kinds of things. Um, okay. Which if you, if you get into a big, big business of this, there's a company called Tango, Tinga, Tinga. You can order stamps there and it saves you. I mean, it doesn't sound like much. Mm -hmm. It saves you a penny. Uh, some people can uh, say so they can do it by saving 10 cents, but I'm just saving a penny, but it ends up being $18 per thousand I'm sending out. So it adds up and yeah. they're delivering. I'm not spending, I'm not spending time going to the, to the post office buying a thousand stamps. So. Got it. Got it. So then, you know, as far as what you're looking at, is there anything more detailed that you look at other than this main dashboard to know how you're doing? No, nah, that's really it. Okay. I mean, like I said, I can go into in individual, um, zip codes and look and see how they're doing. So okay. and that kind of thing. Um, and, then and, then, and then I've got a database of, I don't know where they are. Like I said, I keep trying to find them, but where I can actually see 
uh, like this is just showing, let's well, just one of 29. So I don't know how I showed the rest of them, but um, anyway, it, it, everybody that's in there, I can see um, what is the story okay. with them. Just and then what is the, so the ones that you're nurturing, right? So, you know, you have quite a bit on the nurture side. What does that process look like? So that really depends on whether or not it stays with the buy, with the listing agent or if it goes if it goes back into the ISA world. So if the listing agent has a conversation with them and they're more than 90 days out, it goes back to the ISA. So our listing agents, we try to keep their pipelines 90 days or less. Okay. Um, because they get really bogged down. Yeah. So 90 days or less, it stays with the listing agent. 90 days or further out, it goes back to the ISA. Correct. Got it. And then as far as what the listing agent does with it versus the ISA, is there a specific drip that you have set up? Is it? So all, yeah, so all go into our 36, you know, eight by eight, 36 touch. They all get dropped into that. And okay. then from there, it's on a, you know, it's on a rotation of a call, depending on if it's an A buyer, it's every week, or I mean, seller, it's every week, B every two weeks, C every once a month. Um, and then what do you define an A as? Someone who's? Somebody who's wanting to sell in the next 30 days. Okay. You know, yeah. So you're going 30, 60, 90 on your A, B, and C, right? Yep. Okay. And so the listing agents are then responsible for basically calling those leads every single week. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Got it. And then they're making the calls. Is there any sort of text program that they're on? Or I'm sure they're obviously, they're, like you said, they're on your normal email drip as well, correct? Yeah. I mean, the ISAs have text, they have text okay. drips. The listing agents are purely making phone calls. Okay. I mean, they're, they're moving they're a phone calls. Call and then text, follow up with a text right after. But there's a drip campaign that goes on um, through the ISA world. Yeah. You know, now, now, those nurtures, right? Is there any way you have it organized, right? as your own personal MLS for the other agents on the team, right? Can they go back and say, hey, there's, you know, however many hundreds of people on here that we're nurturing, can they then go through and sort and, and look at it like a private MLS? No, we don't have it exposed to them just because the buyer's agents, just because there could be a fiduciary issue there with them seeing um, that information on the okay. listing side. Okay. Yeah. But then how do we know as far as what buyers, well, explain more about that. So basically, if they have a buyer in a certain area, we can go back and look and see if there's and a match. You can stop sharing the screen, by the way. I think we saw okay. what we needed to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, so basically, we just go back. And if there's a buyer that falls into that zip code or that area, we can go back and see who's there. OK. Um, I mean, I can tell you, um, it's a, we have been really, really busy with it. And it's really a big, it's a bigger part of our business than we ever thought it'd be. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's so much business we're losing because we don't have, I don't have the manpower really to, to truly follow up on some of these leads as quickly and as more as often as they need to. Yeah. Um, and as the market's shifting, um, there's just not enough time in the day to make enough phone calls. So. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's the next question. Like what, where do you take it from here? You know, how do you continue to, to grow it and systematize it, right? So you're fully maximizing the return. I mean, I just add another ISA. I just added another listing agent. Um, okay. Another admin that's going to be kind of my right-hand person. Um, that's starting uh, April 5th. So it's just leverage. You know, it's more people. Got it. Yeah. And then, by the way, I'm still seeing... Did you stop the screen share? I did. I thought. You may have. On my end, I'm just getting the, the spinning circle of doom. Does anybody see my screen anymore? I see a lot of no's. Yeah. All right. So that's just me on my end. It's just you. Right. Fair enough. Yep. All right. So then, so then moving forward, right? Like you said, it's just, a, it becomes a manpower issue, correct? Yeah. And I, I do see somebody asking 15,000 for mailers postage and man hours. Uh, the only thing that that's not included would be the ISA hours, right? It, it is include the hours that uh, for writing the letters, you know, handwriting. All right. And then Gene, I can't pull up any of the, the chat on my side any longer. So if there, are there any other questions that popped up as a result to, you know, how we continue to scale it or what the org chart could look um, like? Somebody that average, the average sale price or the average commission is 18,500 so far on our closings. Um, why do I use the title company? That's just, that's the resource I have that can pull the, the, um, 
different zip codes and the turnover rates and the average sale price is just a, it's a it's a, a leverage that I have. I don't know, you know, you may be able to do it in your MLS. I'm sure it's doable. I just you know hadn't figured it out. Okay. Uh, do I change the address inside the letter? Every letter, every single letter has a personal ad their address to them. You know, it has their name and their address. You mail her. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, all right. So here's here's another point I think which is important on the golden letter because really it can be used for two things. Number one, you started doing it just simply because we needed more inventory, we needed more listings, right? Yeah. That this was kind of your pivot in response to COVID, correct? Yeah, and yet moving forward, I think we can all look at it for also being a great tool to increase price point, right? Because we can certainly target you know, certain zip codes that are at a higher price point. Gene, you already made the point that you saw high dollar clients calling off the letter. I was super surprised. Yeah. I mean, we just got a million dollar one yesterday. We just got one today. Um, and that like the one today, it's a pocket. She's like, look, uh, I will sign a listing agreement with you. I don't want to go on the MLS. Um, and we have some ways here to really market properties off market that are very, very effective. Um, social media wise, um, you know, agents are just dying to, you know, they, they're crawling all over these portals, trying to find properties off market. Um, so I'm not concerned about that at all. Um, obviously we still have the conversation if we can go on the MLS, we got the best chance to get you a lot more money, but they have a dollar amount. They shot it to us and it's okay. You got to do what they want, not what you want. Yeah. So number one, it can be used to, well, increase your listing supply. Number two, it can be used to increase your average price point. And then number three, it can also be used to expand responsibly into other neighborhoods or other territories. Correct? Yep. Absolutely. Right? Because there's really, you know, I don't think any other system like this one that would give you the ROI and bring you listing leads and you'd have to have no, you know, prior relationship with that given area. Yeah. You know, one funny thing, uh, when Maria started doing these letters for us, when when the first batch came back, I realized one, she was writing our return address on there also. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Uh, And then second, her handwriting was so good. I said, it is too good. Too good. This is too nice. This looks fake. Yeah. I said, you've got to like go faster or something or just, just make it look a little bit uglier because this is way too nice. Yeah. Um, and then we also, one thing we did buy was a trifold machine. So she can put 50 letters into the trifold machine in about five seconds it trifolds them all. Yep. And you know, it just sped up things for her. So, you know, a lot. Got so it. Taking a piece of paper and doing this yourself. Yeah. yeah. So the bottom line is, Gene, I could pick you up and drop you into any city in the country, right? Right. right? At any price point, and you'd be off to the races. Easily. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Here, last question on my end that I don't know that I saw it on the spreadsheet. We could probably figure it out. Of the calls, what percentage would you say are, yeah, I'm ready to do it now versus nurtures? I would say 30% are do it now. Okay. 30, 40 percent. And then nurture wise, it's less than a year, you know, another 20, 30 percent less than a year. Yeah. You know, uh, we're catching people like, oh, I don't really want to sell to the summer. Right. But we are tracking. We can see and they're saying 2021, 2022. Uh, so we're, we're real clear on what their future looks like. Yeah. I mean, I know you're tracking the potential, you know, pin, the potential future income. Yet you're only eight months into it. And so we still don't even have some of the data on how those nurtures are converting over yet, yeah. except that they are converting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I said, the amazing thing is we have another 200 people in our database that we've got all their information, had solid conversations with them, met with a ton of them. Um, so, you know, it just allows us to be, you know, part of that 85, 80, 80 90% of the, of the um, population that don't have an agent that we, that they now have somebody that's corresponding with them regularly. Yeah. So, all right, guys, it's the last 10 minutes. This is for you. So either light up the chat box or if you're brave enough, you want to come off of mute. I know it'll be a bit of a mess here at the beginning. What questions do you guys have for Gene? And Gene, again, I still can't see the chat box. So if you see anything in there, please attack it. Gene, do you, um, do you have anybody that ever says, what if they say, if you bring me a buyer, we'll sell, but I don't want to sign a listing agreement? 
Sure. I mean, that happens all the time. Absolutely. And say, great. Um, when can I come see the house? That's it. You got to get, I mean, get in front of them and then go deeper on the motivation. Where would, yeah. if you did, where would you move to? Right. And so now take it to the appointment, right? Because, you know, Ryan handled that objection also. Just get in front of them, whether it's via Zoom or in person. And then yep. in that appointment with the listing agent, when they're still adamant about, you know what, still, if you bring us a buyer, you know, we sell it, but we just don't want to go on the market for whatever reasons. Um, I mean, how are we overcoming that? I mean, it's really easy. I mean, it's, you just go back to motivation. I mean, how good, how good, how well are you scripted in motivation? That's, that's what it comes down to. You can't make somebody sell their house. Um, it comes back to how well can you go deep to find out why, why would somebody get a letter in the mail, call a phone number, leave a message and not be pretty dang interested in, sell, in selling their house. I mean, that takes a lot. I mean, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's weird to me, you know, for somebody to call a random number from a random person, unless they really do have an interest in seeing what they could get for their house. Right. And then it's just getting clear as to if we brought you a buyer, where would you go? That's it. Where would you go? And, Oh, I don't know. I mean, that's the biggest thing right now. There's no houses. There's no houses, no inventory. Well, we can absolutely let's, that's exactly why we should meet, right? That's the number one script, right? It's exactly why we should meet. I'm going to explain to you the process that how we're finding a house for this buyer. We're going to do the exact same thing for you. And you're only going to have to move once. When's a good time for me today at two or tomorrow at four 30. What's better for you. Right. Good. All right. Next question a, in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Can I ask? Yeah, I'll, I have can a I question. Ask, so the gentleman first and then the lady. Uh, just really quick, just the logistics with manpower. Did you try at all in the beginning, just doing a generic, Hey, we have someone that might be interested in your house. Would you, would you consider selling to one of our buyers without their name and address? No. So you could print in bulk. I did not. So you've got, so they just, you can the, way, the same person that handwrites does title, it. Yeah. My title company, uh, prints those letters for me, delivers them here. Maria comes and picks up the letters, the stamps, and the and the envelopes, and brings them back all done. And my runner drops them off in the mailbox. And just to be clear, you're still printing in bulk because you're mail merging the list with the letter, so it's still all one print. Perfect. Good. And then the lady. Am I the lady, Aaron? <laughs> I, I I still got the spinning circle of death on my screen. So oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I need to chat or who's who's talking. So okay. please go ahead. Okay. First of all, thank you for your time, Gene. This is super helpful. I'm, I've am i started doing this on a very micro scale compared to what you're doing. Um, my question is about what this whole clear cooperation thing is doing to this part of your business because the struggle I'm having is I have people who are raising their hands after these letters and saying, yeah, we, we do want to sell, but because of COVID and a myriad of other reasons, we don't want to put it on the active market. Um, so I was just curious, like, how are you... I mean, yeah, we all have three or four buyers in a farm that this house would match for, but what are you doing beyond that when they're saying, yeah, we, we want to do that. We just don't want to go on MLS. Like I'm struggling now. I've, I've ran this particular property through all the prospective buyers that would buy. I farm pretty heavily. Um, I also live in the farm. And so, and then there's a lot of my sphere. So I don't know what to do when they're saying, well, who else do you have, Rach? Like, who else can you show this house to? I'm like, well, my hands are tied because we can't show it to anybody else in the brokerage. I was just kind of curious if you're seeing those kinds of problems, what you're doing with them. I'm not I know that you're not yeah. dealing with that yet. No, not at all. Okay. No. I guess I'm figure it out and I'll let you know. Yeah, because <laughs> you're either doing one of three things, right, Gene? You're either selling it to a buyer directly. You're either listing it on the open market or it just becomes a nurture. Up yeah. until they're ready to do one of those two things, right? Or a pocket listing. It can be. It can become a pocket listing, right? Which in or, essence can be a nurture, but you know, yeah. that's it. I just good question. Go ahead. Whoever I just, asked, go, asked I just want to go. I just want to go real quick and just say that Craig told me to do this about three months ago, and I've sold four houses already doing it. So it's awesome. been awesome. Good job. Can I ask a question real quick. Yes, go ahead. All right, Gene, thank you so much. This is gold. If you were a single agent with just one assistant on an ROI standpoint, getting somebody to go be the runner, how many would you start with? What would your goal be? 
uh, again, finding the right area, right? With the right turnover rate and the right price point that you want to be at. Uh, find out whatever Aaron said, whatever service that is that does it for down to 66 cents a piece. And, you know, start with whatever your budget is. I mean, you've got a budget, you know, if you've got 10 grand, do it. I mean, it's, it's taken me eight months to spend 17000 or $15,000. Um, and so that's, you know, for me, it's the scale. I'm scaling so slow, kind of pissed off at myself because it's like, man, we can scale up this so much faster, but you know, that's just, that's just me. I'm not a high D personality. I'm a IS. I just like, you know, I, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to, I don't want to make anybody upset. So I, I have to put my toe in the water and then play with it. Make sure that, you know, I didn't upset my neighbors. I didn't upset the other agents. I didn't upset, you know, whatever. That's just, that's, so that's my own crap that I deal with that why I don't scale faster. There you have it. Yeah. I, I think Jeannie nailed it. You go back to your P and L, see what your Legion budget tells you you can do. And then I would say most agents who are starting it, who are budget, con budget conscious, are doing between 500 and 1,000. Yeah. And manpower also, because like you said, it's overwhelming. And if you don't have the support in place to not just take the initial calls, but to then to continue to nurture them, it, you're wasting money. You're losing and money. One, one other thing I have to bring up um, is we also call it the golden text. So I've got about 4,000 past clients. And so I started texting 250 a week that the same thing, Hey, would you consider selling one of your, uh, would you consider selling your house to one of my clients? That's it. Holy crap. Every time that goes out, my phone blows up like 50, 60 messages. It's stupid. All right. So two questions on that. Number one, do you send it out from your number or does it go from a third party number? No, it goes from a third party number, which is a local number to our zip code. Some people say, is this Gene? Cause this doesn't, this isn't the phone number. And I'm like, and I respond and say, yes, it's coming from my computer. Um, you don't really put your signature line below that text. You just send the text from a local third party number. And then. Yeah, it's got my name on the end. Yeah. Oh, it does have your name on it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. So, I mean, that's a super easy way and it's, it's stupid. I mean, people just blow you up. It's just. I mean, she, my VA asked me today, do you want to do it today? I'm like, I don't have time to answer. I can't, no. Maybe. Got it. All right, we got time for one more question, guys. Yes. Can you share uh, some of your best practices that you're using for your pocket listings as far as how you're marketing those? Sure. Um, so we have a database of buyers, a huge database of buyers that when we get a, a, a pocket listing, we send out to them, uh, which is often forwarded to other people. And then we've got some social media. And then if it's, if it's luxury, we have a very strong luxury um, service uh, that is Austin Luxury Network that you have to pay to be a part of. And it is, that, that is, everybody's watching that like a hawk to see what comes on there. It's, you know, our, our luxury market is stupid right now. Are you able to include the address? Oh yeah, absolutely. No, no clear cooperation policy issues on, on those pocket listings? Um, let's just, I, I would say that we're probably playing in the gray a little bit. All right. There you have it. All right, guys. Thank you for being on the call. It was recorded. We will send it out. Gene, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for being on here. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your commitment to, to mastery you, and sharing with us. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. Good job, Aaron. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you, everybody. Thanks, Thanks. Aaron. Thank Go you. help somebody. Thanks. Thanks, Gene. Thanks, Aaron. Yep, see you guys.